Hey guys, enter the stars and welcome back to Between the Headlines. It's Friday, I pre-recorded this show. And as you can see, we've got a lot of headlines to cover. Now, we all know about the story with Gabby Petito and Laundry. And I don't know if this story is real. It's probably fake. But remember in the beginning that we were talking about that probably both of these people were already dead. Remember? And we had actually identified an SRA aspect to all of this in this video, which was removed by YouTube in which we identified the video, the music video that Petito appeared in at like 12 or 13 years old. And we found that the media company was actually a satanic media company. And we looked at their Facebook page and everything. Well, YouTube removed this video for other reasons, they said, because later in the video, we talked about um, some theories pertaining to VidCo19. But I believe that the real target of this video was that particular issue with the Petito satanic ritual abuse. So as we get into this first story, they're saying now, which was our original theory that both of them are dead and i think that these cops or some people out here some shady characters had something to do with their disappearance they saw her as the target and whoever was stalking them wanted her and he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time that's my theory anyways now it's totally possible that he did it and there's a coroner trying to cover all this up and it's saying that it's his remains but it's really not that's possible as well and he could have been involved in the satanic cult but the thing is is to even speculate on some of this stuff can be pointless because none of us are there and the whole story could be fake to begin with so i just wanted to report on it so you guys could see my thoughts on it and see what's going on with it now let's go on to this next story now this is interesting because a worker in Florida applied to 60 entry-level jobs in September and only got one interview. This is in the atmosphere of everything going on with these supposed jobs not being able to be filled. There's a supposedly a labor shortage, right? Well, according to Business Insider, this guy applied for all these jobs and only got one interview. So you have to ask yourself, is there really a labor shortage or is there something else going on here? Are these companies, you know, purposely not hiring and just saying there's a labor shortage? In other words, it's a an orchestrated labor shortage. I don't know, but let's read this because this is interesting. Now hiring. Joey Holtz recalled first hearing complaints about a labor shortage last year when he called to donate convalescent plasma at a clinic near Fort Myers in Florida. The guy went on his rant about how he can't find help and he can't and he can't keep anybody in the medical facility because they all quit over the stimulus checks. And I'm like, your medical professionals quit over $1,200 checks? That's weird. Over the next several months, he watched a growing course of businesses said they couldn't find anyone to hire because of the government stimulus money. It was so ubiquitous that he joined a No One Wants to Work Facebook group where users made memes deriding frustrated employers. He said he found it hard to believe that government money was keeping people out of the labor force, especially when the end of expanded federal unemployment benefits did not seem to trigger a surge in employment. And he's got a point there. Like, um, a lot of these benefits have dried up, but yet you still don't see people coming back to work. So what is it really? Expanded benefits ended in September, but 26 states ended them earlier in June and July. If this extra money that everybody's supposedly living off of stopped in June and it's now September, obviously that's not what's stopping them, he said. Workers have said companies struggling to hire aren't offering competitive pay and benefits. So Holtz, a former food service worker and charter boat crewman, decided to run an experiment. On September 1st, he sent job applications to a pair of restaurants that had been particularly public about their staffing challenges. Then he widened the test and spent the remainder of the month applying to jobs, mostly at employers 
mostly at employers vocal about lack of workers and tracked his journey in a spreadsheet. Two weeks and 28 applications later, he had just nine email responses, one follow-up phone call, and one interview with a construction company that advertised a full-time job focused on site cleanup, paying 10 bucks an hour. Do you see how weird this is? Like, what's really going on here? Now, as you all know, finding a job is a skill. Even if you have the skills to do a job, actually getting the job is its own skill, right? And some of us are horrible at getting jobs. I remember when I was in the pharmaceutical industry and I went on so many interviews and only got a few of the jobs. And the jobs that I really wanted, I never got. I always would, you know, get the second or third string jobs. Well, now we're in an environment where they're saying they can't find people. But obviously this isn't the case because people are going in applying. So what's happening here? Holt said the construction company instead tried to offer Florida's minimum wage of eight sixty five to start, even though the wage was scheduled to increase to ten dollars an hour on September thirtieth. He added that it wanted full time availability while scheduling only part time until Holtz gained senior seniority. He said he wasn't applying for any roles he didn't qualify for. Some jobs wanted a high school diploma. Some wanted retail experience. Most of them either said willing to train or a minimum experience. And none of them were over $12 an hour. I didn't apply for anything that required a degree. I didn't apply for anything that said must have six months experience in this thing. Do you see what's happening here? Now, we've had some theories on how do we fix this, right? Because obviously... 10 to $12 an hour is not going to get you an apartment. It's not going to help you pay for a car payment. It's not going to help you pay your utilities and buy food for a single person. So there's a problem in America. And here we are. We've supposedly walked away from a $3 trillion war in Gathmanistan. So now that we don't have all those soldiers there and equipment and all the manpower and moving you know, resources around the billions of dollars a day that it costs to run that kind of operation, that money should be redirected. But instead, we've got a president who wants to look inside people's bank accounts. Look, many of you live with people and what happens is it's easier just to send that person money to their bank account and have them responsible for the bills or vice versa. Well, when you start moving large sums of money around, or even small sums, three, four, five hundred a month, or you know, six hundred is the threshold they want, and into the thousands, the IRS now wants to keep track of that, what's going in and out of bank accounts. And then now you have to defend yourself based on living expenses now you have to explain that to the irs and you know with their backlog and everything going on and how busy they are good luck explaining that to them now you've got a tax bill you see how this works there's something wrong with this what they're trying to do and they're saying that this is only for the rich but really it's not how many of you send per people that you know 500 or a thousand dollars a month a lot of you probably do. Well, now that's going to be scrutinized because it's cash moving from one bank account to another and they can't have that. And they're trying to sell this thing. The Democrats are trying to sell this thing as, oh, you know, it's just, this is only going to affect the 1% of the rich who are trying to hide their money. You mean to tell me that the IRS can't do their job and focus on those people for hiding their money? That's where all the audits should be happening. Not people like us making less than $100,000 a year. The audit should be happening with the rich people who can, who are doing much better than just getting by, who are never going to have to worry about what they're going to eat, how they're going to feed their families, how they're going to send their kids to college. So right there on its face, why are they even auditing people who make less than $50,000 a year? Do you see the problem here? This is about control. And instead of them redirecting all this money that we were spending on defense and saying, you know what, let's cut the defense budget. Be why? Because we don't need it anymore. Because we're not over there 
spending three trillion dollars, I think, was the the last number they they estimated for the last twenty years we've been in Afghanistan. And if they can send out these other checks, then why don't they help people who are, you know, now I, as I shared in a previous story, I was talking to this guy in the, in the at the oil change place, and he was basically saying, you know, you can't have a minimum wage like that because what will happen is he goes, me as a contractor, I'm going to have to pay that wage. And I told him, I go, that responsibility should not fall on you. There should should be some kind of subsidy. Now, I know that sounds scary, but we already have subsidies. We have subsidies for milk. That's why the price of milk stays almost the same. Because for dairy farmers, it doesn't make economic sense for them to keep their dairies open. So the government says, you know what? Milk's important in America. We're going to subsidize it. Also, the government subsidizes farmers. They pay farmers to keep their land dormant and things like that. Well... If they're going to have subsidies for that, and a lot of people don't agree with that, I understand, but it is what it is, and that's how America's been run for decades. If they're going to have subsidies for that, well then, since we have all this extra billions of dollars per day that we're not spending in Gafmanistan, why not help people to have an hourly wage that helps them live their life? Everything's gone up in price. So I don't know, that might be a controversial topic, but obviously stories like this tell you the truth about what's going on, where these people apply for these jobs, no one's even calling them back, and when they do call them back, they're offering them 10 bucks an hour, or 8 bucks an hour. That's highway robbery, to to waste your life away, helping someone else get rich, while you can't even survive on your own. Maybe if you get a roommate or two or three roommates, which is what a lot of people are doing now. So crazy times, you guys, crazy times. So I'll have to follow that story and see what's up with that, because that's very interesting. Now, here's something. Uh, The T-Man is now officially going to launch a media, social media company. Now, it's funny because we were talking about this close to the end of the uh, of his administration right before the election. And we were like, all he had to do was make his own social media company. And if he would have done that, he could have won the election in a slam dunk if it was even a real election, which we all know it wasn't. But, you know, put your money where your mouth is. If they're shutting you down and censoring you, make your own. He could have made this. He could have started working on this the first time one of his Twitter posts got censored. But he didn't. Now he's doing it. And probably this is an anticipation for a 2024 run, which strategically, if this was all real, would be a smart thing to do. And I wouldn't be so sure I wouldn't sign up for this site if it was truly censorship free and built on the same premise as YouTube was. I might go over there. Because why? Because this is going to gain national attention this is going to be a counterbalance to youtube it's no worse than being on youtube and so this is what's going on with the t-man and his new social media thing now this isn't going to come out right away but it's in the works let's read this nine months after being expelled from social media for his role in inciting the crap insurrection former president D.T. Rump said Wednesday he's launching a new media company with its own social media platform. This is his goal in launching Trump Media and Technology Group, TMTG, and its Truth Social app is to create a rival to big tech companies that have shut him out and denied him the megaphone that was paramount to his national rise. And here is his quote here, and this is true. Uh, we live in a world where the Bally Tan has a huge presence on Twitter, yet your favorite American president has been silenced. Now understand this is all by design. They allow the Bally Tan on Twitter to to strengthen the right-left divide for people to say exactly what T-Rump said. Why do they get to be on there? Conservative voices actually do well on traditional social media. Wednesday, half of Facebook's 10 top-performing link posts were from conservative media commentators or politicians 
The team man has spoken about launching his own social media site ever since he was barred from Twitter. An earlier effort to launch a blog on his existing website was abandoned after the page drew dismal views. Well, that's because there was no functionality to it. People want functionality. People want to be able to upload videos and not be censored and say what they want. Had he, you know, come out with that from the get go on this blog site, then people would have signed up. So it was basically like a false start. TMTG has not set its sights low. In addition to the Truth Social app, which is expected to soft launch next month with a nationwide rollout early next year, the company said it is planning a video on demand service. Wow, so this thing's going to go full on. This is going to be the full Monty. So this is interesting. So we'll keep an eye on that, see what's going on. But uh, they're going to try to give Twitter and Facebook and YouTube a run for their money. Now, this is interesting. On to this next story. Vidco likely to be fatal only for the very old and already infirm. So now all they're saying that people who are got the sticker against CV-19 are unlikely to die of the virus unless they're old and already ill. A study in Italy has shown. So we went from last year when this rolled out saying, hey, you all need to be protected to now they're basically conceding that you're for the people that are old and already ill, you're not really protected in terms of you could die from getting it, even if you have the Pokemon sticker. So this is a little bit of a shift and change in what they were saying originally and leading people to believe, which made a lot of people go out and run out and get this to, quote unquote, be protected from VidCo19. So, of course, they're going to use this to push the booster program because if you're not feeling protected after you got both and you know that there's a, a, a chance that you could still die, then you're going to run out and get a booster, right? So that's what's going on with that. Now, on to this next story, Market Watch. Apparently, In-N-Out Burger has sh been shut down in San Francisco for refusing to become the sticker police. Now, this is shocking because San Francisco is very liberal. But according to this article, basically, they... Uh oh, I've reached my article limit on Market Watch. Okay. Basically, they've <laughs> the health department came and told them you gotta shut down. Let's look at these comments. Show comments. Gotta be careful with these comments. The, the government's doing these mandates are essentially turning food service and retail workers into government enforcers. That's absolutely true. Nice job, in and out Fight for our freedom and end government overreach. Segregation is illegal. Good. It's not their job to enforce or be snitches. Good. So overwhelmingly, these top comments, people are standing up. Now, in and out Burger is interesting because if you look on the bottoms of their cups, every single one, or they used to, has a biblical verse printed on the bottom of the cup which i think is interesting so good job in and out see how that all materializes now it seems like california is always in a drought right always having a drought well this time i think it's a little bit different and so california has declared a drought emergency and they said this is the worst drought since the late 1800s because of lack of uh, precipitation and high temperatures. It, of course, 88% of California are experiencing extreme or exceptional drought. Of course, it's 88%, right? And so basically they're saying the reservoirs are drawing down and they're going to have to have emergency measures, including not being able to wash your sidewalks and driveways with potable water and probably other restrictions. Now, remember, California had all that rain, the reservoirs filled up, and then they were basically basically making people use the water, 
Remember that? Well, this is the problem with living in California. The infrastructure to collect the water or their ability to maintain the water in these collection devices is not sustainable for the amount of population that's there. A lot of this has to do with weather and weather manipulation, of course. And so my theory is that they're trying to turn California into an enclave for the elite. What better way to do that than to drive out all of the other people? But what they do need is they need a support staff. So they're going to allow some people to stay. That'll probably be the illegals. They'll probably set up these cities or towns, service towns, to service the elite. I used to live in Santa Barbara, and they actually have service communities that commute from Ventura, Oxnard, that come up and basically service Santa Barbara and the elite there, Montecito, Santa Barbara. A lot of movie stars live there, and they need people to mow their lawns and, you know, care for their elderly and all this. But most people can't afford to live in Santa Barbara. It's a very narrow strip of habitable land along that coastline there. And so you'll see the traffic building up, people leaving Santa Barbara, the the working staff, driving back down to Oxnard and Ventura, and they commute every day, a couple hours, to get there to service the, the elite. Well, they want all of California to be like that. That's what the elite want. So they make it very expensive to live there, and they have all these rules that really don't affect the elite very much. They affect working people. So I believe that's where California is headed. Let's go on to this next story. White House plans to unveil and distribute Vidco-19 to children. So it's here, 5 to 11 years old. This is dated October 20th, 2021. And they still got that fear going, right? Still spreading around the country and everyone 12 and up is now eligible for the sticker nation. With pediatric trial results coming in, experts believe or predict that younger children aged 5 to 11 may get the go ahead in the coming weeks. So here it is. And we know this is going on in California. Parents are speaking out about that. And we'll see what happens with that. Now, Facebook is coming out with a new name. We don't know what that name is yet, but they plan to revamp their image. They're under fire from regulators and lawmakers over its business practices. It's planning to rebrand itself with a new group name that focuses on the metaverse. The Verge reported on Tuesday, oh, you know, they're not going to get out of this by simply changing their name. That's not going to do anything. I mean, do they really think people are that stupid? The name change will be announced next week, The Verge reported, citing a source with direct knowledge of the matter. Zuckerberg has been talking up the metaverse, a digital world where people can move between different devices and communicate in a virtual environment since July. And the group has invested heavily in virtual reality and augmented reality. Reminds me of the those films from like the 1990s and the 2000s. Like the Lawnmower Man, right? So this is what's coming A new name and a focus on the metaverse. Probably a lot more algorithms are going to kick in. Welcome to the new world. Now, with uh, the approval of, you know, the sticker nation for teens, uh, we've got some phenomena that seem to be going alongside that. We can't say that that's the cause obviously, uh, because they're not admitting to that or conceding that. But what is going on here? We've got perfectly healthy high school athletes with sudden cardiac arrest. Now, we have heard rumors that they concede about this heart issue going on. And I don't know that these athletes were or were not sticker nationed. But this is interesting. Now, the article does not say in here whether or not they got the Pokemon sticker. But if they had gotten the Pokemon sticker, I hope there's some kind of uh, people investigating and looking into this. So let's see if there's a comment section in here to see if anybody brought that up. They probably closed the comment section, I can imagine. 
But basically, these are three high school boys, and they all basically fell out from uh, some kind of heart problem. Wow, this is a long article. Let's see if there's a comment section down here to see if anyone else asked the obvious question, which is, did they get the Pokemon sticker? Um, so it doesn't say. But anyway, sad, sad story. Let's read the first two sentences or paragraph about this. Jake West, Zach Mago, and Mark Mayfield all died of sudden cardiac arrest. All unexpected. All their deaths possibly preventable, says their moms. Undetected heart conditions were not on our radar at all because we had healthy boys. They passed every physical and never complained. One athlete is too many, says the mom. These moms are on a mission to raise awareness of sudden cardiac arrest. It's signs and symptoms to push for automatic external defibrillator in schools and on sports fields. Wow. We don't want any other family to feel what we feel, Julie said. Sometimes I say, is this my world? Is this really my world? If Mark was my only child, I don't know if I'd be here, honestly. So they're saying that they had heart issues or are they not saying they had heart issues? Anyway, these are the three moms that lost their three sons. I can only imagine the heartbreak. Now, this is interesting. We were talking about rabies stickers falling from planes, were we not? Like last year. Well, apparently now they're talking about it more publicly. This is the Charlotte Observer. And they're dropping these rabies Pokemon stickers in western North Carolina. Here's why. Now, according to these people, they're trying to eradicate rabies. But here's the problem, okay? These older generation rabies Pokemon stickers were cultured in sheep brains. And which we know that this the, the brains of some of these animals can carry prions, which cause mad sheep, scrapies, and mad deer disease, right? Let's read this. Now, they were doing this up in New Brunswick, and they had some kind of Creutzfeldt-Jacob disease outbreak. They say it's not Creutzfeldt-Jacob disease. It's something similar, but they can't quite put their finger on it. But nobody wants to look into this rabies Pokemon sticker because they were doing the same thing. They were dropping these, these packets that are about the size of a matchbox down to the wildlife, just airdropping this stuff all across the wilderness, and wild animals are eating it. And um, now they've got a problem over there. Now, there's been no connection made to this point, but this is a theory that, that possibly some of this older generation sheep brain cultured rabies Pokemon stickers were somehow mixed in with the newer generation ones that are not cultured in sheep brain. So I guess it remains to be seen. Well, basically what they're telling us is they're dropping these packets to help inoculate wild raccoons against a rampant virus. When you scramble the word raccoon, of course it says C-O-R-O-N-A. Let's keep reading. U.S. Department of Agriculture's Wildlife Service has been dropping rabies stickers from plains along North Carolina's western border since 2005, long before most people knew about the CV or concerned themselves with sticker mandates as part of an annual baiting program targeting raccoons. Why isn't the government dropping craft beer over my house? That's funny. The NC North Carolina Department of Health and Human Resources announced the start of its annual oral rabies sticker program with little fanfare at the end of September. Beginning October 5th, said that more than 500,000 baits would descend from a fixed wing aircraft over the counties in the western part of the state. So here's all the counties where they're going to be dropping these pellets. So if you see something like that out in the wild, that's what it is. It's supposed to wrap up in mid October. The baits are made of plastic packet containing the sticker that's either sprinkled with fish meal coating or encased inside hard fish meal polymer blocks. So it's fish meal. 
raccoon bites into the bait. The packet is punctured and the animal is exposed to the sticker. This activates the animal's immune system, produce antibodies that provide protection against rabies. Here they go, messing with the immune system again. Rabies only affect mammals, with, with more than 90% of reported cases occurring in wildlife. North Carolina's annual vaccine vac <laughs> sticker nation drop is part of a nationwide effort to dampen the spread of rabies. It dates back to 1997 is the largest coordinated effort to control a zoonotic disease in wildlife populations ever undertaken in the U.S. So, what's this going to do? I guess we'll have to see how this all shakes out. But, uh, weird, right? It's weird because there's the whole rabies connection to, to some of these conditions, right? That we'd established. All right, next story. Stickered vulnerable people are still at risk for Vidco. Here are ways to mitigate that risk during this holiday season. So this relates back to the previous article we covered about the people that are most susceptible to getting CV and dying from it or getting hospitalized, even if you got a sticker. And they mentioned Colin Powell, of course, who was fully stickered, but they're saying he had other conditions why do they admit when some of these people have other conditions when it's convenient for them but then when it's not convenient for them they don't really want to know if a person had other conditions doesn't make any sense to me but this is their science right so that's what's going on with that well here's what's going on in california the parents walking out in protest over the sticker mandate. Thousands of California parents and teachers and students participated in a statewide walkout protest, protesting nuisances mandate for students ages 12 and older. Applies to school children in grades 7 through 12, going to effect July 1st, 2022. So here we go. Large crowd gathered out on Monday in front of the state capitol. And uh, it looks here like the permit was approved for 2,500 people. And it looks like they exceeded that. The parents protested at the state capitol carrying signs reading, My body, my choice, and my children won't be science experiment to make you feel safe. So, this is what's going on in California. I'm shocked that this many people stood up. Let's see if there's any pictures of the crowd. Now, here in Connecticut, apparently Bo Jivin showed up and got booed, almost booed off the stage. I bet you didn't hear that in your mainstream media. It was in the local paper, but not in any kind of media outlet. So, weird, right? The, the alternate reality. Now, let's get into some of these airlines because many of the airlines... I think Southwest and uh, what was it Delta maybe are having a softer stance. They're not going to fire these workers. I think what happened is they realized there wouldn't have they wouldn't have any workers. They wouldn't have a business because of the amount of people that they would have to fire who did not comply with the mandate. So they backed off, and this is the only way that we're going to make any headway with this stuff. A lot of people in these groups have to stand together. Okay. Otherwise, they'll roll right over us. And so, of course, United is has the toughest stance. They're like, well, we'll fire everybody if we have to. But they've got like 90-something percent of their people to take the sticker. Why? Because they were the, one of the first ones to do it. And then people start to wake up. And they're like, we're not going to do that. And so, at that point, United basically um, got, a, got a step up or a leg up got a drop on the rest of the airlines while people were still in the fog and they were able to get most of their people stickered. Well, now they've got a problem because now they're trying to position themselves as the safe airline. And they're like, don't go on those other airlines because they don't have a mandate and you're not going to be as protected. Right? But meanwhile, they look bad because they bulldozed over all their people. 
Now, I believe that the pilots probably have something to do with this as well. You can't run an airline with no pilots or even half the pilots or even three quarters of the pilots. You need all the pilots flying. And apparently the pilots were like, we're not doing this. So United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby may not want the carrier's successful CV-19 mandate to be a competitive advantage. But when it comes to promoting his airline over others, he says to travel, he says to travelers, caveat emptor or let the buyer beware when it comes to booking flights okay so more fear don't go to those other flights don't go to those other airlines they're not going to protect you but really people should be looking at this going you know what you shouldn't have done that to your to your people and we're just going to go to the other airlines and support them because they're more free so follow that story as well Meanwhile, many of these businesses have no qualms, no hesitations about just dropping people, just letting people go who don't, you know, go along with their mandates, go along with the mandate that Bo Jivin put down for anybody over 100 employers or 100 employees. Here's what's going on in Illinois. Hospital systems losing hundreds of workers because of the mandates. So they're willing to just drop people like a hot potato. This guy from the uh, in in Hofe urges Defense Department to reverse the mandate. So somebody is standing up. Senator in Hofe, ranking member of Senate Arms Services Committee, is urging the Defense Department to scrap the mandate. So good luck with that. Each military branch has its own deadline for compliance to the sticker mandate for active duty and reserve troops. The Air Force's mandate for all active airmen to get stickered is November 2nd, the earliest for the military. At a time when our adversaries continue to increase their quantitative and qualitative advantages, see that's all hogwash. If you haven't figured it out by now, this whole existential threat that they keep talking about is all hogwash, okay? We're not going to get go into war with China. We're not going to go to war with Russia. We never have and we never will. And so all this fear that they're pushing is simply to make you a good citizen. To make you think about all this fear and send your sons and daughter to join the military. And all the military really does is squash any kind of economies that want to operate outside of their world order. That's what the true purpose of the military is. It's not because we're going to get invaded by China. Think of it this way. If China was such a threat, why do we trade with them? Why do we have so much of their goods in our economy? If there was such a threat, wouldn't China, wouldn't they just be able to go, you know what? We don't like the United States. We're not going to give you any more products. They could shut down, shut us down in two weeks just by stopping the flow if they really didn't like the United States. So why do we trade with our biggest enemy? Because it's all fake. There is no enemy. It's fake. Okay. It's all about control. And whether you like it or not, America will become China soon. That's the whole goal. They just have to slowly, incrementally do it because there's too many guns here. Look at uh, Washington state workers. 1,800 more employees quit or fired after refusing the Pokemon sticker. 1,887 Washington state employees have been terminated or left their position after Governor Jay Inslee's mandate took effect. 3% of the state workers. So... There you go. Some people standing on their principles and not giving in. Now, we talked a little bit about this next story, about this supply chain crisis. And Bo Jivin again is threatening to bring in the National Guard. You don't want the National Guard handing out goods. Because that will bring us right into these post-apocalyptic films that we've watched over the last several decades where the National Guard is handing out goods out of the back of a truck. We're not going there in America. It doesn't have to go there. There's something else happening here. 
This is top down bottleneck. Just like with the jobs and people that go to apply for jobs and still can't get jobs, even though there's supposed to be a labor shortage, there's something happening from the top down. I don't know what it is yet. We can't quite put our finger on it, but if there was really a labor shortage, then we could walk out of our front door tomorrow and each of us could get a $25 an hour job, but that's simply not happening. So Bo Jivin may resort to calling in the National Guard to tackle mounting log jams at ports and distribution centers. Well, I thought he was going to do 24-7 for the ports. Well, apparently that's not working. White House officials are reportedly discussing the measure as part of an effort to tackle supply chain problems that have caused widespread delays in delivery of goods across the U.S. Ports have been, able, uh, have been unable to cope with the huge amount of goods arriving while there are not enough lorries and trains to carry the loads away. Experts have blamed the backlogs on, on sudden surge in demand for goods and services as economies bounce back from the low points of the spamdemic. Similar issues are being experienced across the West, including the UK, where the government has already deployed the army to help drive trucks, deliver petrol, and unclog port infrastructure. However, the U.S. suffered some of the most visible signs of the supply chain stresses, where about 70 container ships were queuing off of the California coast earlier this month. And this is what the ports look like. And this is what led to that port disaster where the, with the oil spill, because all these shipping containers are sitting in the water doing nothing. Mr. Biden's advisors have weighed whether members of the National Guard Military reservist organization usually called in to tackle domestic emergencies could drive trucks, handle packages at ports, or help unclog other parts of the supply chain. The idea was said to have been backed by at least one company and has been discussed by senior members of the president's economics team in the transportation department. So this is the result of their fear campaign over the last two years. This is what it brings. Inflation. It brings backlog. It brings all of these things. Was it worth the cost for 600,000 lives? Which they say died from VidCo19. It'll be interesting when these numbers come out for the death rate over the past two years. When the numbers finally come out of how many more people died compared to a normal year. Will the rate have gone down? Already, we're not getting the 60,000 that normally die from the flu. Already, that number got erased and absorbed. So, I guess we're going to have to see. Now, things aren't all fun and peachy when you go get a sticker shot. People are getting overdosed. Many, many stories. All you got to do is type in actually given a full vial of the sticker. And this is happening all over the U.S. as unqualified people are giving these Pokemon stickers. Now, what are the effects of receiving six instead of one or an entire vial? Who knows? But this is happening all over America. All I got to do is type in accidentally given full vial of the Pokemon sticker and hit the news tab and you will see dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of stories some people got saline instead as well. I don't know how that would happen. Very bizarre. Now, some of you, or probably most of you on this channel who work and have had to face the choice of either getting let go or getting a sticker have applied for a religious exemption. And basically, it's a crapshoot out there. It's up to your employer. And they are, some people are allowing the religious exemption and many are not. There doesn't seem to be any uh, precedent for this. There doesn't seem to be any example to follow or any set rules. It's pretty much every man for himself. This college coach who grew up Catholic and was into the Catholic religion, he was denied his religious exemption. And he was making $3 million a year. It's, in my opinion, it's too much for a head coach, but that's what he was getting. And he got let go. 
So that's an example of someone who, you know, was into the Catholic religion, applied for an exemption, and didn't was not approved. He was raised Catholic and attended a Catholic high school in San Francisco Bay Area. But he says here he reportedly declined to say whether he identifies as Catholic today. That was probably his biggest mistake. So there you go. This is what's going on. Here's the coach here who got let go. And so we'll have to follow this story as well. And let us know in the comments if you applied for a religious exemption and if it was approved or not. Now, it explains here that some of these religious exemptions are approved, but then it's weird. They'll approve it, but then they lay people off anyway. So what's that about? And so a lot of people are suing. They're getting lawyers. It's really murky and tricky. So that's what's going on with the religious exemptions. And those are the headlines between the headlines for today. You guys have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Take care and be safe everybody.